Welcome to worship up here in the chapel at St. Andrews. And we begin with a call to worship. Here in this place, God welcomes all the dreamers as well as the doubters. Here the warriors and wanderers can call on God by name. Here in this time, we can remember all the ways God has graced us. Here in these moments, we are reminded that God is with us always. Here are gathered those daring enough to step out of the comfort into the unknown. Here in this faith space, we will find courage to cry out, God, save us in every situation. Join as we sing the hymn, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I have made the stars of night. I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Who shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard. I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Who shall I send? Here I am. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am. We turn now to a time of prayer in the prayer of adoration and confession. Surprising and mysterious God, you come to us when we least expect it, calling us out of our routines and plans, inviting us to follow Christ into new opportunities. We praise you for the many ways you come to us. In moments of fear, you speak with words of reassurance. In moments of doubt, you reach out your hand to hold. In moments of turmoil, you bring calm to the storm. You are faithful to us through everything life can bring. Merciful and patient God, we confess that we still experience fear and doubt. Even though you reach out to us with saving grace, you call us to live with courage and perseverance, 
yet we can give up too easily and opt for safer for the safer route. You encourage us to be bold in our struggles for justice, yet we remain silent in the face of unfairness. Forgive us all the times we let you down. Renew our lives through your mercy and grace, and so we place our trust in you this day and every day, and honour you as our Redeemer and Saviour. In the name of Christ our Lord and friend. Amen. Rest assured, God offers forgiveness and saving grace to everyone. Accept these gifts for yourselves and offer forgiveness to others in the name of Christ our Lord. We've been, over the last few weeks, reading from the Gospel of Matthew, so I invite you to hear this story of where Jesus and Peter walk on water. Scripture reading is Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I recently learned that there are bridges in which people can request a service to have someone else drive their vehicle over. One such case is the Mackinac Bridge. The following is taken from an article about the service. It is a daily routine for some, but for others crossing the mighty Mac can cause serious anxiety, especially when you add a high wind warning with speeds up to 40 miles per hour. All they need do is call the Mackinac Mackinac Bridge Authority and ask for a ride and they will send someone within minutes to come and drive your car across for you. For some people it's the height and for others it is the fear of bridges in general. About a hundred thousand people cross the Mackinac Bridge every month but according to the Mackinac Bridge Authority about five people a day need to be driven across by one of their employees. Some people don't know it until they get out on the bridge, actually, or they'll drive and they'll get really close, then it sets in, said Todd Mayer, a steeplejack for the bridge authority who helps people get across. The bridge is just under five miles long and its highest point is 155 feet tall, making it understandable why some would get nervous. It's part of Todd Mayer's job to help escort weary drivers across the bridge, and he had seen some pretty extreme cases. He says, I've seen people that curled up in the fetal position, laying on the back seat of their vehicle, or hiding their heads, or shielding their eyes, covering up with a jacket because, you know, it was that traumatic a deal for them, Mayer said. Todd said he feels for the people who are unable to cross the bridge on their own. Fear can be debilitating, as many of us are likely aware. If you don't have a fear of something in particular, you likely know someone who does. Personally, I have a fear of heights and enclosed places, along with not being too impressed by snakes and spiders and moths. For the most part, those fears do not impact my daily living, so I am fortunate but I have met people whose fears have stopped them from enjoying life or moments in life. I know people who have not been able to leave their homes or for whom dogs make it near impossible for them to take a walk. Then there are the fears associated with physical and mental health. You or a loved one might get a diagnosis and your lives are turned upside down. 
death of a spouse sets you on a path of navigating unknowns on your own without your sidekick. You lose your job or are simply trying to find work and nothing seems to be happening and the concerns and fears of how one supports themselves and family or just finding meaning and purpose through work seems out of reach. Fear is one of those deep emotions that sometimes comes out or expresses itself in anger. It can be isolating. Fear can be paralyzing. There are many doctors and psychologists who work to help people overcome their fears. Fear is real. This may be why the words about fear were what drew my attention to this week, uh, or drew my attention this week in the reading about Jesus and Peter walking on water. You can find this story of Jesus walking on water in the Gospels of Matthew, Luke, and John, but only in Matthew do we get the addition of Peter. And you have to love Peter. Throughout the Gospel, Peter, the gospel stories, Peter represents humanity as no other can. He fumbles and falls, blurts out stuff, praises Jesus, recognizes Jesus as Lord, and then in another moment wants to protect Jesus, not realizing the full extent to which Jesus has got this ministry thing and more. In this story, Jesus has been trying to get himself off to pray because he has heard in previous verses and stories a scripture before this, he's heard about the death of John the baptizer. He's been rejected by his own hometown and on his way to pray, sees the need of a multitude of people and so meets that need in what is known as the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Finally, he sends the disciples into, uh, in a boat to go on ahead to the other side of the lake and he dismisses the crowds. Then you know how the story goes. Jesus went up by himself to the mountain to pray. Something to note is that through all of this, like Jesus started off on this prayer journey before feeding the 5,000. He's not forgotten that he needs this time with God. So now he takes it. The story continues. And I'd like you to picture the scene. When evening came, Jesus was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the water, or on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Now, they were terrified. Some of these men were fishermen. They knew what to do and handle and how to handle the storm. What they were all terrified of was this person walking on the lake. For Jewish readers, water had meaning. In Genesis, the world was first covered by water. Life came when God swept away the waters and said, let there be light. And how can one forget Noah and the flood? Then there was the parting of the Red Sea that allowed the Hebrew people to leave Egypt. Significant historical events that impact, impacted the faith and understanding of the Jewish people had many water stories. So Matthew, writing about Jesus on water means something. This, this uh, invitation to water and the stories of water means something to his readers. But the water was not what terrified the men. It was that someone could walk on water that got them. It meant that that person, real or not, had power over the water. In just a couple of sentences, we hear that the men were terrified and cried, cried out in fear. And Jesus' words to them, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Take heart. What compassionate and loving words to say. Reassuring words, followed by, it is I. 
They knew the one coming to them. They had trusted him with their lives just by choosing to follow Jesus. They had participated with him in the feeding of the multitude, and now he was there before them in a way that they did not recognize, at least in their minds. But certainly his words would have spoken to their hearts. And in the face of their fears, he said, do not be afraid. Still, this was not enough for the impetuous Peter as he answers, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when Peter noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. There's that fear word again. And beginning to sink, Peter cries out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him. Peter got distracted, and that distraction made him afraid. But Jesus was right there. And though the words said by Jesus can be heard with various tones of voice, I believe, given Jesus' care of people, the tone was one of compassion. You little faith, why did you doubt? Fear and faith, they go together. We all fear. It may be a phobia. It may be fearing a change. Fear can also be a motivator. We can choose to fear and have faith anyway. Faith in our own abilities, faith in the help of the faith that, faith in the help one can receive from friends, family, or professionals and certainly faith that Jesus has got you. Just as Jesus reached out to Peter as he began to sink, Jesus saves him. He saves him not so that he never fears again, but rather so that he can once again move from that and with courage step out in faith, knowing that God's got this. And remember, Peter was not alone in the boat. He was the one who got out of the boat, but there were witnesses who all were empowered by that experience. They too were strengthened in their faith. And when all calmed down, the people, the men's breathing and the breath of the winds, they were able to say, truly Jesus is the Son of God. In our own lives, fear and faith reside together, just as joy and sorrow, hope and despair reside together. We feel and experience these emotions not as polar opposites, rather as things jumbled up, mixed together. Welcome to being human. Whatever you face this day or in the days to come, May the phrase you hear looping through your head be the voice of Jesus saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Know that Jesus is aware that though that phrase doesn't take away your fear, but it may be enough to calm you, bring peace, courage, and motivation to live fully as a person of God. And in that, others will see and truly know and come to know also by your witness and what they have witnessed, what is possible when you know Jesus has got this. We pray it and we say it in the power of the Holy Spirit in Christ, through Christ, and with Christ. Amen. Once again, we come together in prayer, the prayers of the people. Astonishing God, you can always surprise us. You come to us in unforeseen circumstances and in unexpected people. We give you thanks for help offered by a stranger, kindness in an anxious moment, Good news that changed expected outcomes. 
relief in the midst of ongoing crisis, and signs of hope when things seemed bleak. We pray for all who face upheaval and uncertainty, whatever the cause. Fill our hearts with compassion and understanding for the fearful. Steadying God, reach out to us in the storms of life. God of peace, you reassure us. You remind us not to be afraid when troubles arise. We pray for those who struggle with illness or grief, anxiety or depression. We remember those who feel worthless or ashamed, whatever the reason. May they know your peace and strength. Equip us to reach out in every way we can to embody your love in our words and actions. Steadying God, reach out to us in the storms of life. God of hope, you challenge us. You come to us in the midst of the world's troubles and invite us to stand for truth and work for justice. We pray for all those people crying out for fair treatment, working against racism and discrimination, telling painful stories of their lives. Open our hearts with understanding and motivate us to act for change. We pray for those who resist the stories of injustice and defend inequality. Open their minds to the truth that they deny and show them new possibilities for relationships that bridge divides. Send your spirit to work in our communities to create mutual respect and new ways to live as neighbors. Steadying God, reach out to us in the storms of life. Faithful God, we place our trust in you and your purposes. Answer our prayers according to your wisdom and will, for we offer them humbly in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In grateful response for the times that we've known the assurance of the presence of the Holy, we bring our tithes, gifts, and offerings. This is our opportunity to acknowledge the ways in which our lives are lifted from fear because of our faith. We joyfully share what we've brought, resource, resourcing or broader what we have, rejoicing as we are set free to live fully in hope and promise of God with us. If you consider St. Andrews your church, regardless of where you live, or would like to learn more about St. Andrews, get involved with our ministry and work, or make a donation towards the ministry here in Thunder Bay, please visit our website at standandrewsprez-tbay.ca. We continue our time of worship and praise with the song, with the hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
Whether the week ahead brings you storms or calm for you, take heart. God is with us. Do not be afraid. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and always. Amen.